All right, hello and welcome back. It's your boy Hank Hackerson at Hank Hacks Hackers, your favorite system and network attacker. And uh, today we are going into OS Query, the basics. And uh, OS Query was mentioned in one of our previous rooms in our in one of our previous videos. It's a part of the endpoint security monitoring module of the SOC Level One pathway at TryHackMe. And uh, we talked about it, I think, I don't know, it was probably like the intro to endpoint security where we talked about it a little bit. And it's something that's been developed by uh, Facebook, as you'll see in a little bit. All right, before we start the module, a uh, quick little uh, notice. If you find any value from this or if you've ever found any value from my channel or if you learn anything from it, so on and so forth, it would mean the world to me if you could like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell and even drop a comment. Every single one of those activities will actually uh, help with the YouTube algorithm and help us gain more reach so that we can grow this community and help educate more people. That's the only thing I ask from you. Um, and it would just mean the world if you could actually show your support in that manner. If not, it's all good. Even your viewership uh, means a lot and it does help. But... If it really would help if you could like and comment and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. And obviously, when you turn on the notification bell, you get notified the next time a video comes out. So if you're studying for a cybersecurity analyst position or if you're studying for ethical hacker, all that stuff, all these videos will actually help you in your path. So uh, that being said, without further ado, let's jump into the introduction of the room. All right, OS Query is an open source agent created by Facebook in 2014. It converts the operating system into a relational database and allows us to ask questions from the tables using uh, SQL queries. So it's very similar to SQL databases, uh, like returning the list of running processes, uh, a user account created on the host, and the process of communication uh, with certain suspicious domains. It's widely used by security analysts, incident responders, threat hunters, etc. And it can be installed on multiple platforms, probably the one that you're even on too. Uh, what we're going to learn about in this room is going to be the uh, what it actually is and what problem it solves, the interactive mode of OS Query, how to use the interactive mode to interact with the operating system, and how to join two tables to get a single answer. So uh, it's pretty much an overview kind of a room and uh, you'll learn some good basics about it and then we will go into further stuff in future rooms and in future videos. All right, connecting with the lab requires that we uh, start our machine right here, which we already did, and it uh, populates the IP address for me. And just from the piece right here where it says, uh, we're going to get a PowerShell terminal. I'm guessing it's a Windows machine that we're going to be working with. And so that has been completed. And it's, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. So I don't think we need to do an entire dedication to this. And we can jump into OS Query Interactive Mode. And the uh, interactive mode is, uh, I guess, one of, the, one of the many ways that we can interact with OS Query. Um, we can open a terminal and run OS Query I, and then to understand the tool, you just type dot help, um, or yeah, dot help command is what it seems like. And then so when you do that, it goes from the specific uh, user account that you're in, and it immediately shows um, the OS Query terminal, and then from there you can input all of your OS Query commands. And uh, we can list tables by using dot tables. You can list the process associated with the table by using dot tables process. Um, we can list all the tables uh, with the term user in them. So dot tables user, and it will show the tables for that user um, or the user, uh, the tables that have the term user in them. Um, <clears throat> and uh, what else do we got? Uh, the table schema um, tables are uh, table names are not enough to know what information it contains. You have to actually know what to pull from the column and then the, the individual data inside the columns and the rows and so on and so forth. So 
uh, the knowledge of columns and types known as schema in this context, which is, I don't think that's consistent to the overall SQL language. I think it's more consistent to the OS query language. It would be dot schema and then you give it the table name. And then so dot schema users will give us the uh, creating the table users uh, with these UIDs and UID signed and all of these different things that are inside it. Um, the above result provides uh, the column names like username, description, PID, followed by respective data types, big int, text, integer, etc. Um, and we can pick a few columns from this so we can see what's inside them. So we can do select column one, column two, three, and then from table and it will give you that information from the individual table. And so uh, OS query I and then select GID, UID, description, username, and directory from users. That's the command right here. So you don't do column one, column two, column three. You literally have to say select GID, UID, description, yada, yada, yada from users. And then it'll spit that out for you onto the screen like this. And then we have the display mode that if we press uh, dot help, it'll give you more information about it. And uh, the display mode can be done in a few different versions. So the CSV, uh, CSV version, column version, line list, and pretty, which is pretty printed SQL results, uh, which is the default typically, which is probably what this is what looks like over here. So uh, the questions here says how many tables are returned when we query table process. So that we will need to open up the actual machine and query OS query. All right, we start PowerShell and we do OS query I and it should open up OS query in interactive mode. And the uh, command that we're looking for is going to be uh, table process, I guess. So when we query table process in their interactive mode, and that'll give us OS query, and then we do dot tables process, and it gives us three tables as a result here. So the answer to this question should be three. Very good. Now looking at the schema of the processes table, uh, which column displays the process ID for a particular process, for the particular process. So looking at the schema for the processes table, which is our third table. So what we want is dot schema. And we want the table name, which is processes. And there's a lot of responses here. <laughs> So what we want here now is the, the ID, which column displays the ID for the particular process. I'm going to venture a guess that it's going to be the PID. So if I actually uh, pull that from it, so if I say select PID from table or, or from processes, and holy shit, look at that. We have all the PIDs and then that's the process ID. So maybe a better name would be to do PID as well as the process name. So name right there. So PID and name might be a good idea. So we'll do um, select PID and or no, not PID and we'll do select PID name from processes and then there we go now we actually have the PID as well as the name of the process next to it so that's what it'll be like and you got to make sure that you put that uh, semicolon at the very end of it so the uh, looking at the schema of the process table which column displays it it's going to be PID and uh, examine the dot help command how many output display modes are available for the dot mode command. So let's go to dot help and we're going to look for dot mode and it says the output is one, two, three, four, five. So there's five different outputs for dot mode and there it is. Now moving into the schema documentation, 
and uh, well, that's the image itself. So for this task, we're going to look at the documentation of OS Query 551, which is the latest version. The schema documentation looks like the image shown below. And so if we just open this up in a new tab, it should look just like that. And then we have the 274 tables and there's a lot of different options under the tables right here. And then under that, or on this main page, it looks like uh, we're going to see, oh, I see. So it just goes uh, to the actual table itself, depending on which one to click. It's all one page. It's a one page. Got it. Okay. So very good. So these are all of the tables that we have over here, and there's 274 of them uh, over here. It says 106. So ever since the creation of this room there's definitely been uh, several new tables that have been added to this and so we have the number of tables the table name itself that's the current version that would be on uh, compatible with windows so this particular situation maybe that's what it is so if we do compatible with windows there you go it'll bring it down to 106 for us and so 551 windows and now we have 106 tables and so the then app compat shims, whatever that is, app compatibility shims are a way to persist malware. Uh, then we have the column that is inside of it, the type of information that's in it, the type of data that's in it, and then the description. And uh, the breakdown would be as such, although I feel like we don't really need that much of a breakdown, but so uh, drop down list uh, with various versions of OS query, choose the version of OS query you want to see, uh, number of tables within the selected version. I mean, so this is what all of these things are. And we already saw all of this, so we know exactly what's going on over there. And uh, show only tables compatible with Windows. We already did that. And now we have enough information to navigate. So in OS query version 551, how many common tables are returned when we select both the Linux and Windows operating system. So if we go here and do Windows and Linux, we should get a combination, right? So it should only be 56 that apply to both. In 551, how many tables for Mac OS are available? So we just turn this off and turn Mac only on, and that would give us 180. And in the Windows operating system, which table is used to display the installed programs? So we're gonna go to Windows, and then uh, I'm just gonna search the page for installed uh, programs. So Atom packages is list all uh, Atom packages uh, in that are installed. So installed, let's see, programs. Is that a term that'll show up? No. Nope. So if I do programs, come on, programs. There is one, and then there is right here. It's actually called programs. So that's the table that's gonna show us the number of programs. Very good. And in Windows operating system, which column contains the registry value within the registry table? So in uh, this Windows, which, so we have to go to registry. So we're gonna search for registry and it shows what does it show we want which column contains the registry value within the registry table so name of the registry value type of registry value data content of the registry value and then timestamp of the registry so the name of the registry value or the actual value itself so it would either be data or name right it says which column contains the registry value within the registry table i would say it's data yeah, there you go. So there you go. We got that pretty easy uh, navigation and it's actually very, very user friendly, very helpful. I am quite impressed by the developers at Facebook uh, or AKA Meta. Uh, you would think that these guys know what they're doing <laughs> when they're building something, right? So uh, it shouldn't be surprising that they are good at building something helpful and useful. So moving on to creating SQL queries. All right, the SQL language implemented in OS query is not an entire SQL language that you might be accustomed to, but rather a superset of SQLite. So realistically, all your queries will start with a select statement 
This makes sense because with OS Query, you are only querying information on an endpoint. You won't be updating or deleting any information, which makes sense. The exception to the rule would be using other SQL statements such as update and delete is possible, but only if you're creating runtime tables, which is views, uh, or using an extension of the extension that supports them, if the extension supports them, excuse me. Your queries will also include a from clause and end with a semicolon, which we've already established. So if we look at the schema for programs and select whatever from programs limit one will look like this, right? Select everything from programs limit to one and it's going to only give the very first output of everything. So name, version, install location, but it's only giving us out of the first one. The limit was used uh, by a number to limit the results to display. Uh, your results will be different if you run this query in the attached VM or the local machine. Uh, the number of columns returned might be more than what you need. You can select specific columns rather than retrieve every column. So name, version, install location, etc. from programs limit one, right? So it would only give you name, version, install location, and install date from programs. So the count uh, query, so select the count from programs, and it says 160. Um, it, sh it shows how many programs or entries in any table are, are returned. And so we can see how many there are. And so if we do that, that means there are 160 actual results that we can pull from inside the programs table. Uh, select everything from users where the username has James. So it brings all of the information about somebody whose name is James. And that is pretty intuitive as well. Um, the equal sign is not the only filtering option in a where clause. Below are filtering for operators that used in a where clause. So equal, not equal, uh, greater than, greater than and equal, less than, less than and equal, between, that's nice, like, okay, and then wildcard multiple characters underscore would be wildcard one character. Uh, so matching wildcard rules. So um, this is from the uh, SQ, uh, OS query documentation showing examples of using wildcards. So match all files and folders for one level match all files and folders recursively, meaning go through everything inside of that directory or that program. Um, match all within the level ending in ABC, and then match all within the level starting with ABC, right? So if you do this first, that means it ends with this, and then if you do the, the characters first and then uh, percentages, uh, percentage signs afterwards, that would be everything after that should match with it. So matching examples would be users, percentage, library. So show for every user's library, but not the contents within. Now you do users, uh, percentage, library, and then you put that forward slash at the end, and it shows for changes to files within each library folder, but not the contents of their subdirectories. And then you have the percentage after the fact, which changes to files within each. So it actually is now looking at the files inside of the directory. Uh, now we have two, which means recursively within each directory, it goes through everything. Um, and then bin uh, percentage sh would be monitor the bin directory for changes ending in sh. So some tables require a where clause, such as the file table to return a value. If the required where clause is not included, then you will get an error. So in this situation, it says so select from file, and then we table file was queried without a required column in the where clause. So it would mean that we would need to do select something from file where the something something or where the file is something something like that. Uh, joining tables using the join function. So schema users. So this is the users table, schema processes. That would be the process table. And then now we can combine certain things. We can join certain things from these two tables. So looking at both of them, we have UID and users. Uh, that's meant to identify the user record. And in the process table, the column UID represents the user responsible for executing the particular process. And we can join both tables using the UID field. So select UID, PID, name, path 
from processes, select UID, username, so on and so from users, and the join query would be select P, PID, so processes PID, P name, P path, and then U username from processes and then P join users U on U UID equals P UID limit 10. So you want to select the PID, the name and path from processes that's been established as P for the variable of it. And then you want to use the, you want to select the username from users that's been used as the U variable. And then you want to join them. So join uh, from processes P join users U on U UID P UID and then limit 10. So what that would look like is that would give us the PID and the name of the PID, the path of the PID and the username that ended up using it. And so you pull it from the users as well as the, the processes table. Um, for more information regarding SQL and creating queries, we can visit the documentation. So using OS query, how many programs are installed on this host? So we can pull out of this right here and let's do a, can I do clear screen? Would that still work? No, it doesn't work here. So I need to close that out, do clear screen. And then from here, I'm gonna do OS query I one more time and it will put me into OS query. And so now I want to see uh, programs, right? Is that what they're asking for? How many programs are installed on this host? And I think just, I can do, uh, I can just do, what is it? schema programs and then there is a count there was something that gave us something about count so right here so instead of actually being schema programs what it's going to be is that it's going to be select count so select i think it might need to be caps locked why is my caps lock not working select count from programs and do that and it will give us 19 as a total count so we can just do that right here and then using OS query what is the description for user James so we can see just from here that under the schema for users there is a description column so what we're going to do is we're going to say select uh, everything or select description probably select description from and maybe from needs to also be caps locked so select description from users where username equals James let's see if that works there we go so select description from users where the username equals James. And so the description for James is a creative artist. And when we run the following search query, what is the full SID of the user with RID 1009? So if we take this full thing, the query, select path, oh, select doesn't need to be caps locked because they don't have it. So select path and key and name from the registry where the key equals H key users. So let's see if I just do a copy of this, I can probably do control V in here. Can I do control V? Oh, I thought I could. Okay. So I got to type it out one second. All right, there we go. And so the one that we're looking for is RID 1009. And it says, uh, what is the full SID of that person? So if I kind of expand this, should give me a little bit more. And the SID. So I'm gonna say that this is the SID. And from there, we could do control C. Hopefully it doesn't kick us out. It didn't kick me out, so that should be fine. And there it is, okay. 
so that is indeed the SID so it's basically everything after the H key users but there's also a path right here or a column called name and so that's what it is and so for the registry since we're using the registry uh, table and a uh, name in that case uh, signifies their SID now when we run the following search query what is the Internet Explorer browser extension installed on this machine so we're gonna use this well, I can't copy paste, so I have to type it out. So, so select everything from IE extensions and it's asking for uh, what is the Internet Explorer browser extension installed on this machine? So we have the Microsoft URL search hook. I'm guessing that's what it is. And then that's the registry path and then that's the version number and that's the path itself. So Microsoft URL search hook. Let me see if I can control C on this and come back out here oh no it's asking so it's asking for the path i guess right because it said what is the internet explorer browser extension what is it so it's not saying where is it but based on the response that we got here it seems that we want the path itself so it's going to be this right here And there is that. And after running the following query, what is the full name of the program that has been returned? And it seems like we're looking for Fireshark, but the full name of Fireshark. So let's see what I can do here. And there we go. So Wireshark. So Wireshark 3.6864 bit is the name that we are pulling from this thing. And that's pretty much it for our creating SQL queries. And we can now just go into the challenge and conclusion portion of this and see what else we can find. So first we need to find the table that stores evidence of process execution in the Windows OS. So the uh, which table stores the evidence of process execution in Windows OS. So we're in Windows, and I'm just going to do a search on this thing. Process. Let's see what we can find. Execution. That's not a thing, so I can just do execution. And we have a few things. So this is the tracks application execution. Let's see what else I can find. This is for uh, tracks when a user executes an application. Uh, this is for artifacts of execution. And what else do we have here? Uh, shows metadata related to file execution. And maybe this thing is this process execution. The query is scheduled in OS query. OS query schedule. And what else we got? Discovery execution. Current packs. And we got speculative execution. And application execution. So we're back to that so i wonder if it's uh, processes maybe would it just be processes if i click on that all running processes on the host system i'm just going to say that because the word execution isn't anywhere in there so we're just going to do processes as our answer and see what happens here oh that's not it so evidence of process execution in windows os Okay, so uh, if we replace process with application, then this might be something that might be useful to us, which is the user assist uh, table. And so let's see if that is the answer here. And it is. Okay, so one of the users seems to have executed a program to remove traces from the disk. What is the name of that program? So if we do select everything from user assist uh, we'll get a bunch of stuff and from here we need to kind of just look at what we can potentially find as the what is it removes traces from the disk so it's I think it's uh, it might be disk wipe or something but so these are all of the uh, stuff in user assist and it's right here so it's called disk wipe so disk wipe would probably be the answer to that 
and we got it. So create a search query to identify the VPN installed on this host. What is the name of the software? So we're trying to find the VPN installed on this host. Okay, so we have the name, the version, the install location, install source, publisher, so on and so forth. These are the things that are installed in the table programs. Now, in the table programs, we're looking for something that might be VPN or is like VPN. And I think the, the query uh, says that we can use like in it. So let's see if we can find that. I saw it earlier. Yeah, so there we go. So this is kind of the previous query that we used down here where it shows select name install location from programs where the name is like Wireshark. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretty much duplicate that name install location from programs where name is like and we'll do VPN. And we have a few actually. So we have Proton VPN, Proton VPN tap, tune, and then another one that's called Proton VPN. So the uh, it says what is the name of the software? So it could be Proton VPN probably. There we go. How many services are running on this host? And so let's see if we can get a count of the services running on this host. Select count from services and that gives us 214. So we did a select count from services. That one was pretty straightforward. And let's see if that's the actual answer though. 214, that is right. Okay, table auto exec, uh, a table called auto exec contains the list of executables that are automatically executed on the target machine. These, uh, there seems to be a batch file that runs automatically. What is the name of the batch file with the extension dot bat? So similar to the other one. So select name and install location from auto exec where name is like, and we'll do percentage dot bat and then close that out and then semicolon and it says name uh what did i do what do you mean i didn't do from okay so select name install location from auto exec where name is like percentage dot bat no such thing as install location okay so select name from auto exec where name is like percentage dot bat. All right, so we got bat startup dot bat. Those are the only things that showed up and I'm guessing that's what it is. Bat startup dot bat, there we go. And finally, what is the full path of the batch file found in the above question? So what we want is path. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to just include path as one of my search parameters, guessing that it is one of the columns where name is like bat and the name is like bat like that. And let's see if we can get path out of there. All right, we got two of them. So what is the full path of the batch file? got two paths here so let's try the first path and see which one if it's this one nope that's not the right one so I'm gonna say that it's this one and that is the one okay so we were able to find it um, pretty intuitive pretty useful tool I like it a lot, actually. And uh, that's it for this room. We were able to wrap the room for OS query, which is actually very helpful. And they even had a an instructor video at the very top that we could have used. But I was able to find the information for the most part with a little bit of trial and error. 
And trial and error typically keeps like it helps you learn better instead of just looking up how to do something. So uh, that being said, we have now wrapped the OS query room. If you learned anything from this room and if you got any value out of it, I encourage and invite you to please like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell and even drop a comment because it helps the YouTube algorithm find our channel and get us a little bit more exposure so that we can grow the community. But this uh, probably the more important one is that when you subscribe and turn on the notification bell, you'll get notified the next time a video comes out. So if you're studying to become a cybersecurity analyst or if you're starting to become an ethical hacker, you get a lot of good information out of this channel and it ends up being a win-win situation for the both of us. So I invite you to like, subscribe, share, uh, turn on the notification bell, drop a comment, all that good stuff, just so we can be in each other's lives, basically. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. It's your boy Hank Hackerson at Hank Hacks Hackers, your favorite system and network attacker. And that was it for this video. Uh, peace, love, and chicken grease. If no one else loves you, Hank loves you. I will see you in the next room. Peace.